In this video, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about pre-ordering albums in the music industry. And I also want to be the first to acknowledge, I'm aware that the title of this video seems a little clickbaity. It seems like I'm going to reveal something sinister and evil about the music industry and pre-ordering's a scam. And that's not what this is. That's not what I'm doing. I just thought that was the best way to get this point across because I would love to talk about this with people. And if you're familiar with my channel and my reaction videos, you know that whenever a band has a new album coming out, I always mention those pre-orders and I put links in the video descriptions because pre-orders do help the bands a ton. But lately I've been realizing there are some misconceptions from a lot of people about how pre-orders work and what they actually do. And this video actually spawned from one comment that I got on a video recently. And a YouTube user said, I am so opposed to the pre-order culture and how it is overall destroying quality in every industry. So I had to unsubscribe and been nice knowing you. Now, I'm not bothered whatsoever that that person wanted to unsubscribe from my channel. That's totally cool. And this video is not about calling that person out. As you can see, I blacked out their name and picture because this is more about just talking about pre-orders in general than calling that person out. But I was curious and I told them, I don't care that you're unsubbing, that's cool, but what's your reasoning behind this? I'm genuinely curious. And they responded again and said, pre-order in general is bad for the consumer. It would be good for the music company distributing the album and probably good for the artist. However, let's say the production company sets a deadline for the band saying the album has to be out by this date because we have already done the marketing and the pre-orders are in. Then the band may have to rush the process and end up not producing a quality album. But the consumer has already pre-ordered, so the record company still gets their money, but the band's image will get tarnished, and the consumer will be angry about spending money on a bad product. And there's a little more past that, as you can see, but none of that is true. None of it. And I'm gonna cover that in this video. We're gonna talk about the history of pre-orders, how long it's been going on, how it's used, how it helps bands, and the difference between the different kinds of pre-orders and pre-ads and pre-saves, especially in the digital age we're in now. Doing reactions on this channel is fun and everything, but I also wanted to take my knowledge from working in the music industry and share it with others, and maybe we can all understand how this kind of stuff works better. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and by the end of this, if you have any questions whatsoever or have anything to add, feel free to drop them in the comments below. But let's get started. So before we really dig into this video, I'm sure there might be a couple people that watch this that are going to think to themselves, well, wait, isn't this guy just a guitar tech? How does he know how the recording industry is working and how labels are doing pre-orders and sales and stuff? And while that is true, most recently I have been a backline tech, guitars, bass, drums, stuff like that. I've also been a production assistant on studio albums. So I've been there from day one of recording an album all the way through mixing, and mastering, and then seeing when the label has done pre-orders up to the release date. So I'm familiar with how that works. And on top of that, I've been a merchandise manager for a lot of bands. And before everything was done digitally, I've actually had to hand collect physical pre-order forms from people pre-ordering albums at the merch table for these bands. So I'm familiar with this system. I know how it works. So I just wanted to get that out there so you guys are confident in knowing the information you're gonna get is accurate. And while a lot of this is based off of my personal experience, I did do a lot of background research on this subject to make sure that everything you're gonna hear on this is on par with how everything is working in the music industry. One of the first big misconceptions with pre-orders and even release dates in the music industry is that once a label sets a release date for an album and then they allow pre-orders, it might put the band in a position where they have to rush through the recording process to make sure that there's a product out for the consumers, no matter how good or bad it is. And that's honestly just not really true, man. Record labels do have album cycle timelines. They have a general idea of when they want their bands to have new albums coming out. And generally it's every 18 to 24 months. But you better believe that once they pick a release date, 
they're going to double check with their bands. They're going to make sure that the band has enough time that they're comfortable with where they're confident they're going to go in and record an album that's up to par with what they think they can do. And pre-orders for those albums generally don't start until the label has at least heard some of that record. And I've seen that in my experience. And even you guys, when you pre-order albums, sometimes there's already songs available. We're getting singles ahead of these albums that are already done and mixed and mastered. And when pre-orders finally do go live, there might be a few other things that need to be done. There might need to be some mastering that needs to be done on the rest of the album. There might need to be some packaging and artwork and stuff like that. But for the most part, the label knows the product that they're already pre-selling to the customers. And one of the reasons I know for sure that bands aren't being like super rushed and turning something in at the last second just to make a release date is because over my career, I've had a lot of bands share their upcoming albums with me months ahead of time before they've even come out. And even recently, Nicholas from Orbit Culture sent me a copy of their brand new EP to check out if I wanted to. Now, I haven't because I want to listen to it with everybody else, but pre-orders for that album are up and that album doesn't come out for another month, but it's done. So these labels aren't just trying to collect money from consumers and then release a shit product. That's not their intention. There's a lot more that goes into pre-orders and we'll cover that in the rest of the video. So one of the other misconceptions that I've seen people say about pre-orders is that it's generally a new thing for the music industry. Like bands and labels are just now getting on board with pre-orders because they've seen other industries do it. That is absolutely 100% not true. Pre-orders in the music industry have been going on for decades. And even though the delivery for music has changed over the years, the general concept of pre-ordering an album has remained the same. A band that you love is putting an album out and you want to make sure you get that album the day it releases. Now, back in the day, people were genuinely worried about those albums that they wanted selling out on release day. So you could go to your record store ahead of time, you could pre-purchase an album before its release date, and you would get a receipt or a ticket for that album. And then the distributor sends the appropriate number of albums to the record store, and on release date, you go in with your ticket or receipt, and you get that album, and there's no fear of it selling out. And I'm sure there's been cases where it hasn't worked out perfectly, but that's the general concept of it. And people did it a lot, man. In 1987, Michael Jackson's Bad Album had two and a quarter million pre-sales at record stores. Dude was already double platinum by the time that album even released to the public. Now today, that fear of albums selling out isn't really a thing anymore because for the most part, record stores are a thing of the past. Everybody listens to music digitally and not a lot of people are buying physical media. I still buy vinyls from bands as like collectibles, but I don't listen to them. I listen to all of my music digitally as well, but I do have that sense of being kind of old school. And if a band sells something physical, I want to get it just to support them. But even though that fear of album selling out isn't a thing, pre-orders are still a big deal today. Just last year, BTS set a record for having over 4 million pre-orders for their last album that came out, man. And again, most of those are digital. That's not people that are afraid that the album is going to sell out. That's people that just love the band and are excited to get that album the day that it comes out. So even though a lot has changed over the years in the music industry and with how we listen to music, the general concept again is pretty much the same. A band that you love has an album coming out and you just genuinely want to support them. Now, with advances in technology and different delivery methods for music, there's been a lot of things added to the whole pre-order culture as well. You may see lately, there's a lot of things that say pre-add or pre-save, and we'll talk about that for a second. So as we all know, pre-ordering a record is actually purchasing it. You're contributing financially to the band to buy their album. But with streaming services, pre-adding and pre-saving have become a big thing now. And to be completely honest, it's pretty much the same damn thing. 
pre-saving and pre-adding is the same thing on different platforms. When you pre-add an album, that's on iTunes, Apple Music. When you pre-save an album, that's Spotify. And basically what you're doing there is just pre-adding it to your playlist that you listen to streaming music on. So you didn't necessarily purchase the album, but if you pre-save or pre-add it, the day that the album releases, it'll get added to your playlist of new music on whichever streaming service you're using. And sometimes with pre-adding and pre-saving and pre-ordering, you'll get bonuses ahead of time. You might get a couple singles earlier or something like that. But overall, it's the same kind of thing. Just with pre-ordering, you're actually buying the album. And with pre-saving or pre-adding, you're just making sure it gets added to your streaming playlist the second that it comes out. Now, those two things have become a pretty big deal. And there are even charts that keep track of those things. Just recently, Billie Eilish's latest album had over 800,000 pre-ads and pre-saves and actually made it onto a chart for that, even though nobody physically bought that album. And I honestly think in the future, pre-adding and pre-saving might be a bigger deal than it actually is now. You might actually start seeing like those pre-ads and pre-saves added to overall record numbers. I think in some cases they already have been. And that seems kind of weird to me because again, you're not actually buying the record. You're just adding it to your playlist on the streaming service that you're paying for. But I hope some of this kind of cleared that up because up until recently, I honestly had no idea what pre-saving and pre-adding was either. So let's talk about what pre-ordering an album actually does for bands, labels, and the distributors other than contributing financially. And we'll go back to the record store days like we were talking about earlier. You go to a record store, you pre-order an album, and a lot of people would do that. That gives the record store a really good idea of how many units of that album they're going to need to purchase from the distributor. They'll compile all of those pre-orders that they got in that pre-order time frame, and they'll say, oh, okay, we got 200 pre-orders for this album. Let's order 300 units from the distributor. That way we can cover the 200 that were already pre-sold, and we'll have 100 left over just in case anybody comes in looking for the album that hasn't pre-ordered it. Now for the labels and the distributors in particular, that lets them know how successful an album is gonna be ahead of time and in turn helps them to keep up with the demand of an album. Going back to that Michael Jackson example in 1987, Bad pre-sold two and a quarter million albums before it even came out. So the distributor then knows they have to print two and a quarter million units of that album to keep up with the pre-sale demand at record stores all over the place. And let's be honest, off of that many pre-orders, they probably printed like five million units of it to go out the first week because they knew that that album was going to be a massive success. Now in today's age, we're not as much worried about albums selling out and distributors aren't worried about getting numbers for shipping out physical media because not a lot of physical media is bought anymore. You will often see there are limited edition pre-orders from bands and labels that are doing vinyls and CDs and cassettes and stuff like that. But often they're in a limited number because they know a ton of people aren't gonna be buying it. So a lot of the times you'll see like 500 vinyls being sold and that's it. So it then becomes a collector's item. But if there's not a limited quantity on it, then those pre-orders give them a good idea of how many physical CDs and vinyls that they'll have to make even in today's times. Now, one of the really big things for bands in particular with pre-orders is that every single pre-order that's made gets included on the first week sales for overall records charts. So let's say an album pre-sells 100,000 copies, but then the first week they only sell 50,000. That number will end up being 150,000 for the official charts that go out. And I've seen examples where pre-sales have placed bands really high up on charts. In 2011, I worked on an album with the band Red called Until We Have Faces, and they pushed pre-orders on that album insanely hard. We were on a tour doing physical pre-order slips for the album at the merch table and stuff like that. And over the course of that tour, it was insane. I mean, the number that we pre-sold was actually more than half 
of the first week record sales. And when that record finally came out because of all those pre-sales, it was number two overall in the US on the Billboard top charts. And then on the smaller charts like hard rock, Christian rock, all that stuff, it was number one everywhere. And that's pretty much because of how many units they pre-sold before the record even came out. And even today, 10 years later, I've seen this help bands a ton. Lord of the Lost in Germany just recently released a new album, and I believe it was number two overall in Germany. And not only that, but it placed on charts in tons of other countries as well. And it had a lot to do with the fact that so many people pre-ordered that album when pre-orders became available. And the charts are honestly super important to these bands. I know there are people that say they don't care about accolades and stuff like that, and that's totally fine. But when your band gets placed that high on a chart, yeah, there's little awards and stuff involved, but people take notice. They see that stuff and they were like, whoa, where did that band come from? And in turn, that could turn into radio play and additional tours and the label might give their bands more support. So you pre-ordering an album from your favorite band actually helps them a lot more than just contributing to them financially. And on top of all of that, it even helps the band's booking agents as well because they can break down the areas where people pre-ordered and even pre-saved and pre-added albums onto their playlists. They can get a good idea of what markets in what parts of countries are really into these bands. So when they start booking tours, they can say, oh, we had a ton of album sales in Chicago. Let's definitely do a show there. And on top of that, based on how many people listen to that band from the areas, they know what size venues to book at as well. It also helps for bands getting onto tours as a support act. If there's a band that's already booking a huge tour through certain areas, their agents can look and see what other bands do good in those areas and they start considering, well, hey, since we're hitting these markets, why don't we bring this band out with us because they do well in those markets and they've sold a lot of albums in these areas. So while pre-ordering an album may help out bands and labels financially, there's a lot bigger things in play than just the finances. And by pre-ordering an album or even buying it just the first week it comes out, you're helping your favorite bands a lot more than you would ever realize. So hopefully this video helped clear up any questions and better explained how the pre-orders work in the music industry. And if you guys do have any questions or general comments, or even if you think I'm wrong about something and just want to have a discussion about it, drop the comments below, man, because I read through all that stuff and I would love to talk more about it with you. But as I always say in my videos, and I still want to impart it now, if you ever want to support a band and their music, Pre-ordering and buying their album the first week that it comes out helps them a ton. And on top of that, I can honestly tell you from experience, the bands will absolutely appreciate you for it. So thank you very much for your time and for watching this video. And if there's any other topics in the music industry that you would ever like me to talk about or cover or have any questions about, let me know and I would love to do more videos like this in the future.